Chickens in Hoshe is a lovely, warmly spiced dish, just right for a grey autumn day. The chicken is poached whole and is stuffed with grapes, parsley and sage, and garlic. It's then presented with saffron rice and sprinkled with powder douce, a medieval spice mix. My version of powder douce contains ginger, cinnamon, a few cloves, and Indian bay leaf. You can find out how to make it by following the link to my blog in the video description below. Poached poultry dishes seem to have been quite popular in elite medieval households. Richard II's cookery work, Form of Curry, in which chickens in Hoche is found, also has a poached goose dish, geese in Hojepot, as well as another poached chicken dish called chickens in Cordel. And there are also instructions to boil partridges, capons, pheasants, and even curlews in good broth with spices. In my version of chickens in hoche, as well as sprinkling on the spices at the end, I'm actually going to adopt that method of poaching the chicken in the broth with the spices. I think this will give more flavour than the original recipe, and I'm all for enhancing flavours. So, let's cook modern medieval chickens in Hoche. Take a chicken, the best you can afford. This is a free-range organic chicken, weighing in at just over 2 kilograms, which is admittedly a little bigger than I need, as you'll see. Aim for one about 1.5 kilograms. You need to season the cavity with sea salt, then stuff it with a big bunch of parsley half a garlic bulb, a bunch of seedless grapes of any colour, about 200 grams, picking them off the stalk, and then finally some sage. I'm using some rather splendid dried sage, since my sage in the garden is actually looking a wee bit sorry for itself, but by all means use fresh. You may wish, unlike me, to put each of the stuffing ingredients into the cavity a little bit at a time. Then place the chicken into a large pot. I should have got a smaller chicken. This one is a little big for even the largest of my pots. Next, you need to put into your pot the following, a bouquet garni of parsley and sage. I used about half the amount of what was stuffed into the chicken. Then the other half of the garlic bulb, don't worry, this will only give a mellow garlicky warmness. Next, a 5 cm piece of fresh ginger, peeled and sliced. Using fresh rather than dried ginger is my modern adaptation here. A stick of cinnamon, broken into two pieces. Four whole cloves. And one Indian bay leaf, not to be confused with the common bay leaf, which is, as you see, a lot smaller. The ginger, cinnamon, cloves and Indian bay are the same spices that are in the powder douce mix that get sprinkled onto the dish when serving it. So what we're doing here is complementing and intensifying those flavours. Then you need one litre of good chicken stock, homemade if you have it, and pour it into your pot. Good broth is specified in the medieval recipe and it's quite likely that this was either a beef broth or a capon broth. Broths were, in essence, pieces of meat cooked in water, but I'm using chicken stock made from boiling chicken carcasses. Then you add to the pot a whole bottle of dry white wine. 
Okay, this was not in the original medieval recipe, but there are medieval precedents for poaching poultry and wine. Geese in hotchpotch, for example, uses half wine and half water. If necessary, top up the pot with water to make sure the chicken is almost covered. It's time now to poach the chicken. It will come as no surprise to those of you familiar with uh, medieval cookery works that the form of curry recipe doesn't actually give cooking times. Essentially, when the recipe states, see them in gorda broth, the cooks knew from experience when the chicken would be ready. Today, different master cooks use different timings for poaching chicken. But I'm going to suggest that we follow the method of the famous Leith School of Food and Wine. First, place a cartouche of baking paper over the surface of your pot. This makes for more even poaching. To make a cartouche, cut out a square of paper just larger than your pan. Fold it in half to form a triangle. Then fold this again, keeping the triangular shape. Make a further fold, and then fold a final and fourth time. Snip off the broad end with angled cuts at both sides. And voila! You have a cartouche, which should be a little wider than your pot. It's easier to fit the cartouche over your pot if you first scrunch it up and dampen it with tap water. Then bring the pot to a bare simmer. The liquid should hardly be bubbling at all. Poach for one hour. If your chicken fits neatly into your pot, you just leave it to simmer away. In my case, having bought too big a chicken, it was necessary for me to turn it over after about 20 minutes to make sure the fleshier upper half of the chicken was properly cooked. Lesson learned. After one hour, remove from the heat, but leave the chicken in the liquid for a further hour. This will finish off its cooking and will allow the flavours to permeate the flesh. At about halfway through this second hour, you can start making the saffron rice. A video of me cooking the saffron rice based on the form of curry dish, Risa a Flesha, is available to my lovely Yevers, who are those supporting my work by subscribing. If you'd like to join them and get access to lots of bonus material, simply follow the link in the video description below. Another way to support my work is by buying me a virtual coffee. The link to that is also in the description below. For those who do buy me a virtual coffee, I'm offering a complimentary copy of the recipes for chickens in hoche and saffron rice. You now need to remove the chicken from the pot into a heated dish. You'll know the chicken is ready, says Leith's, when its legs feel loose and wobbly. I wonder if medieval cooks wobbled the legs of their chickens. Then cover it in foil to keep it warm. In the meantime, it's time to boost some of the poaching liquor by reducing it to make a nice saucy broth. Ladle and strain out some of the liquor through a cloth and sieve into a saucepan. I'm just making up a small amount here for presenting a single portion, but you need about 200 millilitres per person. Any remaining stock can be used to make a flavoursome soup, as I did the next day with lentils and vegetables from my garden. Bring to a rapid boil and let it continue to boil until the liquor reduces by half. Season with a little salt if needed and add some finely chopped parsley. That's it! Keep the broth warm on a very low heat, covering it with a small cartouche to stop a skim from forming. To serve your chicken in hoche, Remove the skin and carve your chicken into portions as neatly as you can before arranging them on top of a dish of the saffron rice. I like to carve each breast into quite thick slices and then fan them out over the rice. Then sprinkle on a little powder douce, a touch of spicy magic. You can decoratively arrange a few of the poached grapes sliced lengthways and then finally Pour the broth over the rice. It's time.
time to eat. lovely those spices from the powder deuce excellent that's delicious the um, the flavors from the the cooking liquor the poaching liquor have permeated the chicken and the chickens silky and tender it's excellent the broth has a nice fresh parsley taste to it but there's a lot of depth there as well from all of the spices and other ingredients that went into it. There's warmth from the ginger and it's not hot, it's just um, delicately warm, let's put it that way. The cinnamon and cloves are, are quite in the background but they are there so that gives it a, um, a more complex spicy flavour but again it's still quite delicately spicy. I'm gonna have some more chicken. Mmm. 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 Well, Leith School of Food and Wine did good. This is the best way I've ever poached chicken. It's really excellent. Just have a bit of this rice on its own. Mmm. There's still a little bit of bite, which I like when I cook rice especially if you're doing like a risotto or paella rice. And the saffron is, is uh, subtle, it's not overpowering, and it gives it that lovely colour. I'm just gonna have a grape now. Mmm, that's quite intense, the grape, lovely. Mmm, they're better cooked than they were fresh, excellent. Really quite um, raisiny in flavour, actually. I'm really pleased with this. Mmm.